All they wanted to do was be heard. I listen to people who have been traumatized for two years, and all they wanted to do was be heard by the people that they elected to serve them. And our Prime Minister lost a great opportunity to do what leaders do, and that is listen yes, and serve the people. Yes. That's right. And all they wanted to do was have a voice, and we could not even give them that. Instead, what did we do? We, we utilized the Emergencies Act. The Emergencies Act. People's property were confiscated. Where assets were frozen. Bank accounts were frozen. Irrespective of what you believe, we have a system of due process for when we confiscate people's properties in this country. And it was not adhered to. And that instills a lack of confidence in our democracy and in our system. And I'm running to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Many people have asked me, since I've been going across the country, why are you doing this again? Why run for leadership again? And the truth is that the reasons that I initially ran in 2020 are all still here, but they are magnified. The fabric of our nation is still being torn apart. We have provinces threatening to leave our great confederation. Debt is piling up to the tune of $1.1 trillion. Wow. And what is it that we're paying? It's so outrageous. $300 million a day on interest rates. See, I had to rethink that because it is so exorbitant. $300 million a day we're paying just in interest payments on our debt. Think about what that does to the future generations. Think about how we have saddled future generations with debt. In addition, the social fabric of our nation is being pulled apart. We have people in churches that won't speak to each other because of their vaccination status. We have parents that won't speak to children, neighbors that won't speak to each other, people who are being terminated from jobs that they've worked at for 30 years because of their vaccine status. We have Canadians who cannot get on a plane in their own country. These are the things that we're dealing with. And these are some of the reasons why I'm running. We also have seen encroachments, governmental encroachments upon our freedom. Imagine what transpired within the last two months. We have seen truckers come from all across our country. When I was in Ottawa, I had to pass by the, uh, the trucker protest because it was one block away from my apartment. And every day I passed by to go to Parliament and I stopped and I spoke to these individuals. And many people thought that what I was doing was, was wrong because I was the first person in our party to do that. And I heard people telling me that all they wanted to do was be heard. I listened to people who have been traumatized for two years and all they wanted to do was be heard by the people that they elected to serve them. And our Prime Minister lost a great opportunity to do what leaders do, and that is listen and serve the people. Yes. That's right. And all they wanted to do was have a voice, and we could not even give them that. Instead, what did we do? We, we utilized the Emergencies Act. The Emergencies Act. People's property were confiscated. Where assets were frozen. Bank accounts were frozen. Irrespective of what you believe, we have a system of due process for when we confiscate people's properties in this country. And it was not adhered to. And that instills a lack of confidence 
in our democracy and in our system. And I'm running to make sure that that doesn't happen again. In 2020, when I ran, many of you know that I had no connections within the party, but I witnessed that we need change. We were moving towards a culture where people were not even free to speak, where people were not even free to acknowledge their faith in public. We were canceling everything that made this country great. Even our Canadian identity, we were being taught to that, that that is something that we should not be proud of. And to me, that is a travesty. And so I put my name forward in 2020. And the message that I had resonated with people, and we won the popular vote as an outsider. I want to make sure that whatever your faith is, whatever your belief is, we have the freedom to disagree. I'm pro-life, and I know may, there may be people in the audience. I know that there may be people in the audience that are pro-choice, and I say to you, that's your belief. All I ask is that we have an opportunity to perhaps have a conversation, and I can guarantee you that there will be things that we agree on, that even in policy, such as even like pregnancy care centers, there are things that pro-life and pro-choice people agree on, and we have to have conversations, and we should be able to in a free and democratic society. Yeah. I'm running most of all to be a bridge builder because I believe that our country needs healing. I believe that our country needs unity. We need to unify our party first, and then we need to unify our country. I'm running because I'm concerned about the debt of our children. And I'm concerned that children are becoming disillusioned with even the prospect of potentially owning a home one day. I want to give them hope. I want to give them a future. And I will talk more to you about some of those economic policies. But we need to strengthen our economy. We need to bring manufacturing back back to Canada. We need to create wealth. We need to instill confidence in businesses so that they can start to hire people again. And our children can have work and a future, and a future that is bright and with hope of, of some simple things like being able to own a home one day. I'm running because I want parents to have the confidence that they can raise their children in accordance with their values without government interference. I'm running because I want people of faith to feel free in this country and to know that we respect the Charter of Rights and that Section 2B, the right of freedom of expression and freedom of religion is upheld in this country. I want people of faith to know that they have a right to practice their faith without government interference and without government imposing their values upon them. I also want to, uh, to address the regional alienation that so many areas of this country feel. Right here in Alberta, we know that there has been laws that have been implemented which has paralyzed the resource sector in this country and which has benefited foreign countries' oil production. We want to change that. We need to get rid of Bill C-48. We need to get rid of Bill C-69. Pipelines is actually good for the environment, and many of you know that I have a Master's of Environmental Studies. So I take protecting the environment very, very seriously. And I can tell you that pipelines are the most efficient way to transport oil. It, it's better than trucks, it's better than rails, and we have some of the cleanest oil production in the world, the most ethical.
There's absolutely no need for us to be importing oil. And furthermore, we have liquefied natural gas. If we can build our pipelines, get that to tide water, we can get our products over to Europe, offset some of that 40% of oil that they import from Russia and stop enriching countries like Russia to invade countries like yeah. Ukraine. I'm also here for the small businesses. So many small business owners I spoke to told me that they survived COVID on their credit cards, basically keeping their business alive on their credit cards. And many of them couldn't find employees to work because of the amount that we were paying teenagers to sit at home instead of working. And that is wrong. We cannot build a country with those kinds of policies. I'm also concerned about the lack of faith in our democracy and the erosion of trust in our institutions. And I take, I take full blame for the political process and some of the decisions that we as politicians have made to undermine that trust. What we need to do is we need to reinstill trust in our political system and we need to reinstill trust in the media. When we look at the coverage of the convoy. I would, if I were watching media, I would have never known that the peaceful convoy that I walked through every day, where I saw bouncing castles, where I saw people on picking up garbage on the streets so that city workers wouldn't have to do it and they would save taxpayers money, where I saw people feeding the homeless, where I saw people caring for each other. Oh. Nobody would have never known that that was what was happening at the trucker convoy because of the way the media covered it. We were told that they were engaged in acts of sedition to overthrow the government. Yeah. And when charges were laid, only charges of mischief were laid. And that is a breach of trust. We need to repair that yeah. trust. We also need to bring back prosperity. And that means that we have to have confidence in our economy. And when we take something as serious as the environment, which we do need to protect because our creator has given us natural endowments and we need to be good stewards of them. But when we turn that into fear and then start taxing people and creating a carbon tax, which is really on the backs of average people, then we have really misused policy. And I am going to get rid of the carbon tax. Mm -hmm. Because I know that there are different ways to protect our environment. And I'm going to talk to you about some of those policies later on in our question period. I'm not a career politician, as you can see. I'm someone who, I was a lawyer, and I had my law firm. I had a very, very successful business. I've done very well, and I give God thanks for that. And I decided to sell my law firm. I owned the units that my law firm was in, the building. I sold that, and I decided to give my life to serving the people, to make sure that the country that I grew up in is there for my children. And so, I say to you that the next leader has to be one who is willing to sacrifice, who's willing to build bridges, who's willing to do what it takes to unite and prosper that country and cost it what it may. I'm willing to pay that price. Thank you. Rebel News is out there covering the other side of the story and we are doing so on the leadership race for the Conservative Party of Canada. To ensure you don't miss a single report, you can stay tuned at leadershipreports.ca.